This is the Neptune 2 from Elegoo. This is a great budget printer, but it's missing auto bed leveling. So I'm going to show you how to install it and get it all set up. So let's get started. Normally you'd have to use these knobs to adjust the four points of the bed to level it out with your nozzle. Don't get me wrong, this does work, but getting this set up, especially when you're new, can be a real pain. And over time, it will become out of level and you'll have to readjust it. And it looks like Elegoo was already planning for this, seeing that there's already two threaded holes on the side of the hot end, and the fact that there's a header on the main board labeled BL Touch. So here's our BL Touch, it's basically a little probe. It has an arm that will come down and sense where the bed is. It basically works as a more advanced Z in stop. Seeing that it can probe multiple points of the bed, this will create a mesh and the printer will know how much to adjust to keep everything level. But before we can start using this or anything, we need a way to mount it. And since you have a working 3D printer, you can print the mount for this. I'll have a link in the description where you can download that file, along with all the other files I'm going to be using in this. This is a relatively fast print and it should only take about 15-20 minutes depending on your settings. I'm printing this using some silk black PLA. You can really use anything and it doesn't have to be the finest settings considering it's just a piece to hold something. And with that finished you can attach your BL Touch to it and attach all of that to the printer. When you get your BL Touch it'll look something like this and it should come with some extra parts that we're going to use to attach everything. All that we're really going to need are the springs, nuts, washers, and bolts. It will come with this tiny cable, but you need to make sure to order the one that comes with the 1 meter cable. Seeing that that little one will not even get close to where you need to plug it in. Putting it together is as easy as taking your bolt, putting a washer on it, and then putting the small end of the spring onto it, and then feeding it through your BL Touch into the plate and putting a nut on the back. And of course, you'll have to do this on both sides. The springs are optional, you can just hard mount this. They're only really there to act as protection. If something hits this, it'll bend out of the way and not break your sensor. And now to mount this to the machine, we need some M3 bolts that are about 6 millimeters long. And these don't come with the BL Touch, but they're pretty cheap normally. And then all you have to do is bolt them onto the machine. And one very important thing is to make sure that the plug part of the BL Touch is facing out because it won't go on the other way. With that all mounted up, we have to run the actual wiring now. I'm going to use some side cutters and cut all of the zip ties off. You don't have to do this, but I'm trying to make this install as clean as possible and as stock looking as possible. So now I need to get to the panel on the bottom of the machine, so I need to flip it on its side. Make sure your cable is not plugged into the power supply, and it should be able to rest and balance on its own. Now just remove all the Phillips head screws on the bottom panel. They're all the same size besides one, so just keep in mind that one is shorter than all the rest. And just so you know, this is the short one. But with all of them out, the panel should just fall off and you can put it to the side. This ribbon cable is in the way of what we need to get to, so we need to remove this cage that holds in the screen. And with that gone, we can carefully drape this over the top of the machine so it's out of the way. There you go, little guy. At the top of this area, you'll see three plugs that have two wires each and a little yellow tag on them. You want to remove the one that says Z on it and remember which plug it went into. This can be very difficult to unplug, seeing that they glue them in place, but you can use a razor blade or a heat gun to help you with this. But once you do get it out, you can just tuck this plug away since we no longer need it. Before I start plugging in my wires, I'm going to actually cover them in this same sheathing that is on the printer already. I would just run it through the stuff that's already on there, but it's too long and it makes the cables not reach where they need to go. This stuff comes in really handy for keeping your wiring nice and neat and protected. This is another thing that you don't have to do, but it makes it a lot cleaner. But anyways, we're going to take the three wire plug and plug it into the BL Touch header. And just make sure that you have it plugged in exactly like this with the brown wire going to the G on the board and you'll be fine. And for the black and white wire, we're going to plug that in where we unplugged our Z in stop. And you might notice that this is a two pin plug and a three pin socket. You're going to want to plug into the two lower pins with the white wire being at the bottom and the black wire being in the center. So with that done, I'm going to zip tie this to all the other wires and then start closing this back up. Plugging everything in in the right place is very important. If you don't do it right, you can either burn up your sensor or you can damage your board. So make sure to just double check everything and you should be good to go. So with the bottom put back together, we can flip this upright and then turn it around to set up the rest of my wiring. One of the first things I'm going to do is re-zip tie the stock wiring to this point and I'm just going to leave a little bit of slack in it so I can adjust it later. And with a new wire we just installed, I'm going to bring it to the front and plug it into the BL Touch. 
And from there I'm just going to zip tie everything to the Bowden tube, starting from the front and working my way back. Before finishing up the back area, make sure you have nice travel on the x-axis, and then you can zip tie everything else down and adjust things as needed. Once you have everything to your liking, make sure to trim down all your zip ties. That should be all of your hardware installed, just make sure to move everything around so you're sure that nothing is hitting on any wires or snagging. So now we need to go to the software side of things and update the firmware. You can either head over to elegoo.com and download the Neptune 2 source and edit your own firmware from there. It's basically just a text file that is called elegoo.txt and you can go and enable auto bed leveling along with the BL Touch. But if you don't really want to do that, I've already done it for you and you can just download the zip file that I made that has everything you need in it. But anyways, you'll just need to take the four firmware files and put them onto your SD card in the root directory. And if you don't know what the root directory is, it's just in the drive without putting it into any folders. So with everything on your SD card, make sure your machine is off and go ahead and plug it in. Now go ahead and power up the machine and look at your display. It should say booting and then it will go through a bunch of updating. This takes about three minutes and then when it's done, it will go to your normal home screen with your normal control panels. Go ahead and turn off your printer and turn it back on. If everything works right, your BL Touch should turn red and it should move a couple times. And then on your display, go to Tools and then click Auto Bed Leveling. This should make your printer home in the center of the bed using the BL Touch and then it will start probing all around the build plate. So just wait for this to finish. Once that's all done, it'll park in the center again and your screen should say Z offset. This is for you to move the Z axis up and down. That way you can adjust it the right distance from your build plate. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to do a test print and a functional print to see if everything is working properly. So the Neptune 2 has a common problem of not being 100% flat. So someone designed some helpful adjustable feet for this and we're going to print those out and test the printer at the same time. So it looks like the first layer is going down fine, a little close, but I can fix that after this print is finished, and it shouldn't have any problems with it releasing mid-print. So it does take about an hour each foot to just make this base part, and then there's a separate part that screws into them that takes another half an hour, so I'm just going to fast forward through one of them and show you the end results. So here it is with all of its threads intact, and I'm just going to flex the build plate to get it off. So you can see on the bottom it was a little too close, so I'm going to adjust that and print the rest of them out. So here they are all done, assembled, adjusted, and installed. And you can see that there is no movement or wobble in the printer anymore, and it's completely sturdy now. And you might have noticed I'm printing something else right now, and it's actually another upgrade for this printer, which is an organization drawer. And by the looks of it, it came out pretty good, and it took about four hours to print. It does need supports, but they easily break away. To install it, all you have to do is remove this little cover, load it up with your tools and extra nozzles, and just kind of slide it in. And the outside area can hold whatever else you want to put into it. I did want to test printing something a lot longer, and something that had more detail and supports. So I'm doing a 14 hour print of this Japanese Oni mask and I'm using a silk copper PLA. After removing all the supports, it looks like this actually came out pretty good. I did have what looks like one layer of under extrusion. It also looks like these small horns on the jaw didn't print quite right and a different print angle might have been better for this piece. Or some different supports, but overall it looks really nice. And it's going to be a great decoration for my work area. So if you already have a Neptune 2, the BL Touch is a great upgrade and it only costs about $38. And you'll pretty much never have to worry about leveling your bed again. And if you weren't able to pick up a Neptune 2 due to their stock issue, it looks like they fixed that now because they're fully stocked and they're about $180 and you could find some that are $10 off, so $170, which is actually a pretty good price for this printer. I'll make sure that there's links to all the software and hardware in this video in the description below, along with a limited time discount code on some filament if you're interested. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you, and subscribe to my channel. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!